Wow. A little, a little impromptu live tonight, huh? Let's see, let's see if we can get anybody to saddle up with us. We got we got some we got some needs to talk about. I got some needs and we're if they'll be met tonight. Uh yeah, Vikings continue to fill out this fucking depth chart. And uh, I don't know, I gotta say, I'm liking this team Quasi's putting together. You know, I if you don't like this team, you don't have a heart, you don't have any damn football knowledge that's what i'll say we got we got monomedi uh surprise live stream absolutely do not suspect do not suspect you today did, i, don't oh, I think you mean sense. did not suspect us today voss man uh voss man i will say that your jersey is nice and packaged up i'm mailing her out tomorrow morning probably about 8 35 uh, along with bolster's helmet mason wow. m is in the house wow there's still time to mushroom stamp that helmet for bolster before you put it in the box, mushroom stamp. But I, I took a full dump in that thing. Oh, it's, nice. He is not going to appreciate <laughs> opening that gift. He'll, he'll think. Uh, we'll we'll wait for a minute or two see if anybody comes on. Lupagus and I were hoping, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe forty. No, you're definitely hoping for forty. There's no maybe. Well, I mean, I was, I was playing. Is it what's the word? You're, koi? It's koi. You're playing koi Kronk. I was playing koi. Who is our backup <laughs> left tackle? I told Lumpagus, yeah, you know what he is. I, I was telling Lumpagus if, it, it, well, Koi Kronk, I said if we don't get over forty during this impromptu live, we'll never. Oh, we're already there. We're at forty-four. Lumpagus is screwed. All right, wait, I see thirty-three. Eddie Murray. Well, all right, it, it, it's a little conglomeration of Twitter. Oh well. yeah, because yeah, you're getting the. So we got we got Boss Man, we got Michael Boswell. We're gonna be talking top needs, and we want to know your guys' thoughts a hundred percent. That's kind of the main reason we're doing it. We we know what we think our needs are. We want to know what your needs are. Well, the truth is we've shot this video three this <laughs> twice already, and the needs keep changing because the Vikings keep making signs uh, again, yes. which is good. We got to keep adding to the roster. It is very true. We've we've tried this many times, and uh, it keeps changing. So we'll we'll give her another uh, we'll give her another minutes. But uh, Dusty Ray Mason, and look at these guys. We should be going live every damn night. Well, let's not get crazy. Dusty Ray, our friend. Of course he's here. Who's uh, who's going to be he's saddling up? What's that? There's 44. Who's going to be saddling up for the uh, draft day party? We're giving away a lot of stuff. We got we got Ashley is making us some uh, wonderful beer mugs with our logos etched mm -hmm. in it. Uh, also some uh, car window decals. Could you imagine just... Driving down I-35 with that oh. one bar and love, I guess, sticker on the back of your car. Probably get pulled over and get a ticket for being too cool. Probably get pulled over and get head instantly. From the from the guy in the, the room. You know what? It doesn't matter. I'm I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna judge whatever whatever's in your heart. But uh Mason M will definitely be there. Uh what else are you giving away? Jersey, probably. We usually do that. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We haven't quite put together the whole prize list. Hopefully, have some nice uh special guests come on as well. And get some last minute draft scoops and opinions. Yeah, we uh we do have some special guests lined up. We will let you know when they're solidified. They're on the cusp. We're like, you know, I don't know if we want to hang out with you losers or not. Yeah, they're not sure yet. But uh, if we send them one of those window decals, they'll probably do it. Oh god. Somebody needs to get a one bar and love against tramp stamp. I think boss man might already have one. God, I bet he's got one on his penis, but it can only fit the O on there. I bet that thing's been spattered. Just completely spattered. Well, let's do this. So this is this isn't, isn't going to be an overly long show, but we want to we want to do the top biggest needs that the Vikings still have after all these acquisitions. But before we do that, let's let's talk about we we made some moves today. We got to at least give a little justice to these fellas. Yeah, the jihad jihad ward one we saw coming. Did you say jihad? <laughs> I, I put jihad and ward together. Jihad, disgusting. Jihad Ward, yeah, I mean, that, that one was announced that he was visiting yesterday. We, I, I had a feeling he was going to sign. I mean, that's the way it happened with Jonah Williams. And again, Jihad Ward did not get out of town. And then there was all of a sudden Kamu Grigor Hill on top of it, the special teams ace. So uh, you got inside linebacker depth replacing what we lost with Troy Dye. And then another edge rusher. Again, this is filling in needs and also creating flexibility for the draft. So here's where I'm at. If, if at this point in time, when a player visits your team, they're going to sign with you. Have we seen a player visit with anybody that hasn't signed with them? I was trying to think. Um, did Osborne visit with anybody that was announced? No, he. Wanham went. Nobody to, wanted to visit with him. Did Wanham go to Detroit first and then go to Carolina? 
I don't think so. I think he was straight up. Uh, you know what? Maybe. Hey, look, it's our friend, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. <laughs> What's he doing up at this hour? Hey, a little silly Billy. What do you mean up at this hour? He, he stays up a lot later than we do. I know that. Wow. Partying. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, if, if they're coming here, to me, it's like a done deal. They're just doing a physical. Like, that. that's where I see it. And what if uh, they find an LOP, though? LOP do happen. Buddy went with that 199. He wasn't he wasn't gonna do two. He said, you know what? You get her. He's Not on a two. budget. He's smart. <laughs> we do appreciate that. Uh so I did a video early on Camus Grazier Hill. I had to practice that. Is that how they actually times. say it? Oh yeah. Absolutely. He's Kamu Gregor Hill to me. So let let's first stop start with the probably the more sexy signing out of oh. these two. So let's talk. Uh, let's talk about the the man from the New York Giants. Yeah, Giad Ward coming off a five sack season last year. I think he had four the year before that. Uh, and then was it him or no? It was Kamu who had the big huge tackle season. But yeah, I mean a guy. I like to see the the incline on, on sacks. He's going to be a situational pass rusher. Uh, he's not going to be able to starting. So he can get your five sacks this year. I'll take that. Hell yeah. If I saw a man with five sacks, I'd say, "Damn it, you you, you need to get to the doctor." Yeah. Uh, you will not pass your physical at your visit, and you'll get sent away. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Jihad, I mean, he fits the mold. So we've said this multiple times. He's another guy coming off a career year. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know if I saw – I'm assuming it's a one-year deal. I'm assuming it's a very cheap. Uh, the dude is bounced around. Former second rounder. I knew he was early, but I didn't know he was – I think he was like 44 or 42. Like – I, I did not believe he was that early. Like it's fair That's to say. That's where he went. He was a, the forty second overall pick. Oh yeah, he was early. Oh. He was either forty two or forty four, and uh, like he's another guy that just did not pan out. You can throw him in the in the bag with the Jerry Tillerys. Like the like it fits the. We know what Quasey's going to do every offseason. Next year, he's going to sign some guys that just did not pan out. Uh, and that's what happens. But Jihad, I love it. I mean, we had Patrick Jones and we had Andre Carter. Those are backup edge rushers, and he comes in, and he's he's like the number one guy as far as a backup. Yeah, and, and you already got your starters in place, which is huge. You got Van Ginkle and Grenard, so then you know what his role is. He's a backup edge rusher, which you got to have a lot of them. Vikings so probably still going to draft one, but now you know you have mm. a veteran. Patrick Jones came on late last year, and then they're hoping for a lot from Andre Carter. We'll see if that pans out or not, but this really improves the depth of that position. Again, I still don't think it rules you out from drafting somebody at some point. Uh, but I like the move. It's solid, solid depth here. Solid, unlike Lupagus' shit. Uh, Adam is in the house. Uh, Lupagus, oh. it was Adam's birthday yesterday. What? what? Anything you'd like to say or do? I'd maybe like show to, your boobies? I'd like to tell him happy birthday and <laughs> um, maybe maybe put him over my knee next time I see him. <laughs> Adam, happy birthday, buddy. We uh, love you. Is he like 29? Uh, so let's talk about the uh, the other inside linebacker. Yeah, we signed. Try to say you remember his name, Camus Grigger Hill. Well done. So you know what? I honestly like so at inside linebacker. Our backups were Brian Asamoa and Bo Duplain, or I don't even remember. Why don't you name. scroll down and take a look? Uh, God. Andre Boplan, I believe his name Bo is Andre Boplan. I mean, it's Andre Abraham Boplan. I did a whole video <laughs> once on him, and I called him Andre the whole time. I had to redo it. That's all right. We uh we forgive you. Uh Adam, you're damn right. I hope you have a hangover yeah. today. So like I love this. I like he, yeah. he is the perfect Troy Die replacement. Troy Die was the kind of backup inside linebacker, special teams dude. Uh this dude is full on special teams, uh, mm -hmm. one of the best in the league. And I can't wait to see what him and Najee Thompson do out there. They're 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 gonna mess things up. And really, like if if somebody to go down. You got to look at Blake Cashman. He's had some injury issues in the past. Mm -hmm. Like we need somebody back there, and he's a guy that could step in. He started a, a bunch of games in the NFL. I'm not going to say he's great, but he's good. And he was the guy who picked off Kirk Cousins. Yeah, and he had one year. Didn't he have one year? Like 108 tackles or something. I think that was a few Jesus, years back. That sounds really made up. No, I think he did. I'm going to go ahead and Google it. Uh, but I believe you. I believe. No, you. I actually when I was thinking about this in this Grugier Hill. Like Rougier. I don't think it, it, it's an upgrade on special teams over Troy Dye. Am I, am oh I, yeah, no, yeah. he he's better than Troy Dye. He's 29 years old. It's I mean he's just he's kind of like I lump it in with the Jonah Williams type signing, where he adds good depth. 
uh, but also add some very good special teams. So we don't want him to start, but if he does, it's not going to be like, oh, good Lord, I can't believe this guy's starting. In 2021, he had 108 combined tackles, and guess what? uh, with what team he was with. In what year? 21. We have their entire roster. On oh, yeah, no, I, I, oh, you're right. I already mentioned that. We, we He's a Texan. We signed we, every Texan. We signed every Texan. I don't know if, I mean, we like our, our whole pipeline now. We trade with the Texans. We sign their players. It's a, it's a, there's a real serious Vikings-Texan connection happening. Uh, it's with, like it's the like the Vikings here. with the Seattle Seahawks back yep. in the day with the Hutchinsons, the, the Nate Burlesons, the Heath Farwells. Uh, we got a poison. Warren Robinson. Yeah, the Chris Cluey was was one. Blair yeah. Walsh. It goes yeah. on and on and on. All right. Well, so in this show, we're going to talk about the three biggest needs still on this team, position wise, and we want to see yours. We're starting with number three. What do you guys think the number three position need is for the Vikings? You scared? What do you guys think it could be? Percy Harvin. Yep. Yep. Percy Harvin for sure. Appreciate everybody hopping on on this impromptu show. Impromptu is not the name of our. Oh no, it was Grugier. That was Camus Impromptu Hill. It's close. It is very. And close. also, also, buddy, for that that buck ninety nine. What a God, what a that guy. Son of a bitch. He never, never fails us. Oh, he never does. Uh, we got cornerback. Cornerback. Well, Three. we didn't even talk about Griff Daddy. We didn't. We were talking about today's guys, though, weren't we? Yeah, we were. Shaq Griffin in the house. Love it. Uh, I was doing the NFC North roundtable, and and TD, who is who follows the Miami Dolphins, is still pretty much, I'd say, 95% sure that Xavier Howard is going to sign up the Vikings. Really? He just said he loves Brian Flores so damn much, basically, that I think he might come here for free. Damn. Well, let's do it. Maybe we'll just wait on it. They know what's going to happen. There's no hurry. Uh, so cornerback guard. So guard is your number three. We're talking number three. <clears throat> Sneak wide receiver, a sneaky third. Wow. All right. Well, I guess you, you know, our number three, what's your number three? Uh, number three, we are going with defensive line. Uh, again, we have some death built up now with, with Williams, Bullard, Tillery, Jaquil and Roy. We have one quality starter and we have a bunch of guys. We have a bunch of, Backups we have, but we have backup depth. Jonah Williams was on the field last year. Jonathan Bowler has been on the field. Jerry Tillery. Oh, I mean, so at least we have some guys with experience. I'd love to add one of our fourth round picks be on this side of the ball on uh, this position. But right now, I feel like the depth's good. I just don't know if we have another starter. Yeah, defense, hundred percent. Uh, defensive line should be third. And 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 Ted, you're right. Like nose tackle to me is the biggest concern. Like. Like Jerry Tillery, if he has to start all year, I'm fine with that. Like Harrison Phillips, if we got to bump him out to the other end, that that sounds fantastic. Mm-hmm. It's it's the big man in the middle. That's the biggest issue. We do not have that big, fat ass that goes up there and just absolutely takes on takes on a guard in a center and lets lets those guys do it. Uh, so defensive line, I, I liked I like the Jordan Williams and Tillery. I really do. I, I, I just, just don't, don't know, know where it's, it's going to end up. I just don't know if it's much of, I mean, anything's an upgrade over Dean Lowry. So I'll say that, but I want a guy like, I mean, and we're going to draft him, but a guy who can take over a Chris Jones style, whether he's playing inside or out, McKinley be up Jackson. there, uh, shutting down the run, creating pressure on his own. That's the kind of guy we need. And that we don't have that guy right now with any of these guys. So it needs to come, whether it's a nose at end, whatever, we need to have that one stud on our D line. And I don't see him here in this group, but I do like the depth. Gear bear helmets going out tomorrow, man. I, I, <laughs> I had her all taped up today. <laughs> Say it to protect from cousin at the end of that. Uh, he did. Fits my lower head perf- perfectly to protect from, from his cousin. <laughs> it's not Kirk Cousins. He's talking I will about. be clear. Gare Bear, you didn't wrap up with your cousin. You're sick. No. You're sick. You shouldn't be. It felt too good. I'm just trying to make a new cousin. Uh, that would be a second cousin, just to be clear. <laughs> I never uh, understand so, that. Yeah. Defensive line. Just, it, it, I mean, the thing is, what I'm excited about with Brian Flores and this defensive line, like the Tillery and the Jonah Williams signing, Brian Flores made everybody so much better last year. Like, I really do think he could take a Jerry Tillery and make him better. 
Like Tillery has been a complete bust. Jonah yeah. Williams is just this un, was he undrafted free agent? I mean, I think he can make these guys actually better. I think he'll make them better. I I just don't know if any of them can get that much better. If Jerry um, Tillery comes in and gets six plus sacks, I think it's it's a fantastic season. I'll I will slam some fireball on here. Topless. God, we we've seen you on just absolutely wasted on this thing. It was I didn't not say great. I was gonna do it when I was drunk. All right, so defensive line it. is our number three. Uh, what's our number two? Our number two is uh, guard. It's left guard. Oh, God. So An interior offense line depth as a whole. And you can maybe even kick this out to, uh, if you can scroll back up, I believe our left tackle is Koi Kronk, backup. Yeah. So interior line is the real problem to me. I mean, Blake Brandle as a starter, that's concerning to say the least. Uh, I don't know if he's actually started a game at left guard in his career. I know he's filled in all over the place, but actually as Pretty a starter. sure he's played tight end. Yeah. Um, so that's a concern. And the depth behind him, you got Henry freaking Bird, the Birdski. Uh, and you got Dan Feeney, who looks cool. Uh, he's got a cool mullet and mustache. And he didn't look that cool. Like he came straight out of 1985. Um, but uh, he's not a very good football player. Then Tyrese Robinson is your depth. So <laughs> you need probably a starter here and then another guy you can rely on for depth. You know, I could be way off, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but Tyrese Robinson, Coy Cronk, and Henry Bird, if they've started over seven games in the NFL, I would be absolutely shocked. And 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 it's easy to say, you know, we don't want Blake Brandle starting at left guard. Nobody does. And you know what? Maybe he'll come in and shock the world, and we'll be the first guys to to send him a, a one bar and oh, love this sure. trophy. But uh, nobody wants that. This this is this is disgusting. If Blake Brandle were to go down, Henry Bird is playing. Yeah. So far, uh, Bird Cronk no starts between the two. Let's that, see if that makes sense. That makes sense. Tyrese Robinson is your last one. Oh no, it was Robinson. Maybe Henry oh. Bird I haven't checked on yet. Bird's your only hope. Henry Bird doesn't even have a pitcher. <laughs> He's got no. That's starts. never good. He is the guy in Madden that just has that black yeah, silhouette. That shadow. Yeah. Yep. He, he. That's not good. Uh. It's a shadow player. I really wish. So Zeitler got signed by the Lions, so that dream is dead. Dalton Reisner, no team wants him. I just like, don't think Even it's... last year when the Vikings signed him, he was just there. Like, nobody like, wanted him. What's the deal? It was like uh, you getting a prom day. Like, there's someone behind us said yes. Yeah, I know. Like, they're someone just, just like, this guy. Fine, and they're like, you know what? I have nothing else to do tonight. I'm going to show up in my <laughs> jeans and my hoodie. I will I was... go with you. I was wondering this last night, like, does he have, like, the worst agent in all sports? I mean, he I don't know he if he's signed until September agent? last year. I mean, what is the issue? I don't know. I, I've seen scheme fits maybe is some of the reason. Uh, he's just not very good is another reason. I don't know. To me, Reisner being unsigned and for this two years in a row, something's going on that we don't know about. Well, I mean, and we know, like, in the comments, like, Oscar, been a while. Can't run block. He can't. I mean, he's a good pass blocker. Uh, like Dalton Riser isn't like this top 15 guard in the league, but he's a top 32. Boswell has, Bob, Boswell has a theory. Riser isn't wanted because of his position in the NFLPA. All right. We'll, we'll take maybe that. That's what it is. You know what? Maybe, he, maybe it is. And uh, it's just weird that even when, he was done with the Broncos. It took forever to sign, and he came in and he played very well. He's still not. Maybe his price takes too high. Whatever it is, the fact is that guard is still a huge need for the Vikings, uh, depth wise, starting wise, everything wise. And if you're going to wait till the draft and you're going to wait till round four, I don't think you're going to squash that need. You're not going to squash the need, but you got you're going to feel better if you had a fourth round guard. I don't want him to take a guard in round four. I want him to take <laughs> a defensive lineman. You can you got you got you got two fourth round picks now. If you swing a deal with the with the Cardinals or the Chargers, a good chance you're gonna get another one. We could have three fourth rounders. I hope so. Uh, so we could be sitting real nice. And I think you can get a guy who's gonna make you feel a little better about that group, but still you may be signing somebody after cut day to fill out that depth. Well, and that that's my big thing is like I don't think I mean they could find a depth piece in round four. I just don't wanna sign or draft a guard. So I'm just being selfish. When well, you got Blake Brandell. Brandale. Brandale. All right. What's our number one need? Our number one need is it's the quarterback. It's quarterback. Oh, the quarterback position. And yes, we signed Sam Darnold. I'm surprised with all these 
people out there thinking that, you know, Sam Darnold still got something in him. He's going to show us something. It's a one-year deal, $10 million. He's here for one reason, to hold the position until the rookie is ready. Don't kid yourself. That's why Sam Darnold's here. Yeah, it is. Uh, this is easy. Um, I mean, we'll see what they do on draft day. Are they going to wait till draft day? Are they going to trade up and t- tomorrow? What are they going to do? But quarterback will easily be the need. Um, we've said it a million time, times. If, if it's Sam Darnold, that's going to be our starting quarterback and we draft a guy like J.J. McCarthy, it's like I would almost rather Sam Darnold just hold it down. If we get a Drake May or Jaden Daniels, put them out there week one and, and Sam Darnold never even plays a snap. I think there's a good chance any of those guys is going to start over Sam Darnold. I think it'll just it will start seeing it. We're going to hear it. Draft day, Sam Darnold's our starter. It's going to carry into the OTA. It's going to carry into his training camp. About August second, we'll start hearing oh JJ McCarthy or whoever is taking snaps with the ones, and then pretty soon it's going to he's our starter. So I think that's what's going to happen. I'd be more surprised if Sam Darnold starts a game, assuming that the rookie doesn't get hurt. But I think I, I think he's probably maybe never start a game for the Vikings. I, I I do think he actually starts a game for the Vikings. I think he starts multiple games, and I actually hope it is because I, I just want that rookie to come in. Like I, I just close my eyes and I think of really bad things, but then I think of the Vikings and I think of like Sam Darnold just not doing great until about week five, and then this rookie quarterback comes in halfway through the second quarter, throws his helmet on. And slings a little, three touchdowns that game, and it something just beautiful just happened, and we're all the just hard starts. Yeah, uh, again, I think the the odds, just the way it's gone in the past with our teams, is the rookie usually ends up starting. I think it's been uh-huh. one, one quarterback of the last six or something drafts in the top ten didn't start. Uh, so we'll see how it happens. Um, again, we're on different sides of the spectrum there. I think I think they'll be the rookie right out the bat, but whatever. Well, to be clear, if it was a rookie week one, don't get me wrong. I'm not like upset. Oh, you're not going to be mad. I love everything about it. So uh, we'll see. But quarterback, you know, as easy as it is to say, that is the top need for this team when you have Sam Darnold, Nick Mullins, and Jaron effing Hall. And we're in a position to get to get our guy. So we'll see where they want to go, three or four. It seems like there's this weird push I've seen starting today on Twitter a little bit uh, of J.J. McCarthy being the Patriots choice at three, and not to be shocked if that happens. So hey, I don't know. It. We'll see what the Vikings decide to do. Uh, again, if you get to four or five, you're probably going to get some draft picks in return just the way the chart looks. So uh, I think the Chargers are probably more desperate to trade out than the Cardinals. But with Mar- Marvin Harrison, too, not doing the combine, not doing his pro day, I mean, what the hell is going on there? Maybe one of these teams that want to receive it early might pass on them now. It's, I don't know. It's it's weird. I mean, maybe the Cardinals just said, look, you're going to be there at four. Don't do a single damn thing. We're going to take you. Maybe. And, you know, with them being able to make money now, prospects can make money in college. You know, Maybe there's not this rush to, like, you know, overwork yourselves. I don't know. I don't know what this thought process is. Maybe his dad's just telling him, you know what, you're too damn good. So, I, I think J.J. McCarthy knows exactly what he's doing. He's going to be a top five pick. We will see. Uh, but, uh, you know what I, if, if you could pick right now, would you rather have the Vikings make a move right now and get like number four or number three, or would you rather them wait till draft day? Honestly, I th- I think when this is all said and done, it's going to be really close grade wise, in my opinion too, between McCarthy and may, I think I wait and see what the pages do before I make a move. Are you on draft day? I am on draft day. I think I wait and just see what they do. Just for the weird sh- chance they do something odd and don't take a quarterback at three. Just imagine this. I know. Like, we 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 wait till draft day, and for some weird-ass reason, we get McCarthy at 11. Yeah. And then we just get, like, a whoever. Johnny Newton, Cooper DeGene, Kool-Aid. Like, anybody at 23. Mm-hmm. Quasi should be – he should have a crown. I know. Could you imagine? The I don't think it's going to happen, but I, I, oh God, I don't think they can sit. Like I said, for that to happen, you would have to be really high on Penix or Knicks as a fallback plan. What might mean like Penix to. at 23? I, I, but I mean, is, is does Quasi feel that way? I mean, you'd have to because you can't sit there and risk that with like the Raiders sitting back there and the, and the Broncos as well, potentially being able to jump you, even though everybody thinks the hmm. Bo Nix is a perfect fit for the Broncos. Bo Nix. Broncos, they can kiss my ass. All right, those are our top three needs. We appreciate everybody hopping in on this impromptu live, real quick. Remember, we'll be live tomorrow for a real horned up. 
Real. Uh, 515. We got plenty to talk about. Bring you guys on. Do a little who'd you do. So I'll uh, be sure to saddle up for that. And yes, Dad, hit that like button. Boom. Do it. And remember this. Koalas in Australia are in danger of becoming extinct, extinct due to over half of them having chlamydia. A lot of koala facts. 